This episode is brought to you by IVP. Asian Americans know the pain of being called names that deny their humanity, but it's a challenge to discern what names reflect their true identities as Asian Americans and as Christians. In the book, Learning Our Names, a team of East Asian, Southeast Asian, and South Asian Christians explore the identities in history of the Asian diaspora in America, who have been shaped and misshaped by migration, culture, and faith. As a listener of this podcast, you can receive 25% off of Learning Our Names when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's I-V-P-O-D-2-5 at ivpress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. A daily audio Bible podcast read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwen. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading Isaiah chapter 7 verse 10 through Isaiah 8 The Lord again spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a confirming sign from the Lord your God. You can even ask for something miraculous. But Ahaz responded, I don't want to ask. I don't want to put the Lord to a test. So Isaiah replied, Pay attention, family of David. Do you consider it too insignificant to try the patience of men? Is that why you are also trying the patience of God? For this reason, the Lord himself will give you a confirming sign. Look, this young woman is about to conceive and will give birth to a son. You, young woman, will name him Emmanuel. He will eat sour milk and honey, which will help him know how to reject evil and choose what is right. Here is why this will be so. Before the child knows how to reject evil and choose what is right, the land whose two kings you fear will be desolate. The Lord will bring on you, your people, and your father's family a time unlike any since Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. At that time, the Lord will whistle for flies from the distant streams of Egypt and for the bees from the land of Assyria. All of them will come and make their home and the ravines between the cliffs and in the crevices of the cliffs, in all the thorn bushes and all the watering holes. At that time, the Lord will use a razor hired from the banks of the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, to shave the hair off the head and private parts. It will also shave off the beard. At that time, a man will keep alive a young cow from the herd and a couple of goats. From the abundance of milk they produce, he will have sour milk for his meals. Indeed, everyone left in the heart of the land will eat sour milk and honey. At that time, every place where there had been 1,000 vines worth 1,000 silver shekels will be overrun with thorns and briars. With bow and arrow, people will hunt there, for the whole land will be covered with thorns and briars. They will stay away from all the hills that were cultivated for fear of the thorns and briars. Cattle will graze there, and sheep will trample on them. Chapter 8 a child is born for a sign. The Lord told me, take a large tablet and inscribe these words on it with an ordinary stylus. Meher Shalel, Hash Baz. Then I will summon as my reliable witnesses, Uriah the priest and Zechariah's son of Jebrekiah. I then approached the prophetess for marital relations. She conceived and gave birth to a son. The Lord told me, name him, Meher Shalal Hashbaz. For before the child knows how to cry out, My father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria 
will be carried off by the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again. These people have rejected the gently flowing waters of Shiloh and melt in fear over Risen and the son of Ramalia. So look, the Lord is bringing up against them the turbulent and mighty waters of the Euphrates River. The king of Assyria and all his majestic power, it will reach flood stage and overflow its banks. It will spill into Judah, flooding and engulfing as it reaches to the necks of its victims. He will spread his wings out over your entire land, O Emmanuel. You will be broken, O nations. You will be shattered. Pay attention, all you distant lands of the earth. Get ready for battle, and you will be shattered. Get ready for battle, and you will be shattered. Devise your strategy, but it will be thwarted. Issue your orders, but they will not be executed, for God is with us. The Lord encourages Isaiah. Indeed, this is what the Lord told me quite forcefully. He warned me not to act like these people. Do not say conspiracy every time these people say the word. Don't be afraid of what scares them. Don't be terrified. You must recognize the authority of the Lord of heaven's armies. He is the one you must respect. He is the one you must fear. He will become a sanctuary. But a stone that makes a person trip and a rock that makes one stumble to the two houses of Israel. He will become a trap and a snare to the residents of Jerusalem. Many will stumble over the stone and the rock and will fall and be seriously injured and will be ensnared and captured. Tie up the scroll as legal evidence. Seal the official record of God's instructions and give it to my followers. I will wait patiently for the Lord who has rejected the family of Jacob. I will wait for him. Look, I and the sons whom the Lord has given me are reminders and object lessons in Israel sent from the Lord of heaven's armies. Who lives on Mount Zion? Darkness turns to light as an ideal king arrives. They will say to you, seek oracles at the pits used to conjure up underworld spirits from the magicians who chirp and mutter incantations. Should people not seek oracles from their gods by asking the dead about the destiny of the living? Then you must recall the Lord's instructions and the prophetic testimony of what would happen. Certainly, they say such things because their minds are spiritually darkened. They will pass through the land destitute and starving. Their hunger will make them angry, and they will curse their king and their God as they look upward. When one looks out over the land, he sees distress and darkness, gloom and anxiety, darkness and people forced from the land. Proverbs 31. The words of Lemuel. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. O my son, O son of my womb, O son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which ruins kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, or for rulers to crave strong drink, lest they drink and forget what is decreed and remove from all the poor their legal rights. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitterly distressed. Let them drink and forget their poverty, and remember their misery no more. Open your mouth on behalf of those unable to speak for the legal rights of all the dying. Open your mouth, judge in righteousness, and plead the cause of the poor and needy, the wife of noble character. Who can find a wife of noble character? For her value is far more than rubies. Her husband's heart has trusted her. He does not lack the dividends. She has rewarded him with good and not harm all the days of her life. She sought out wool and flax, then worked happily with her hands. She was like the merchant ships. She would bring in her food from afar. Then she rose while it was still night and provided food for her household and a portion to her female servants. She considered a field and bought it. From her own income, she planted a vineyard. She clothed herself in might, and she strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchandise was good. Her lamp would not go out in the night. She extended her hands to the spool, and her hands grasped the spindle. She opened her hand to the poor and extended her hands to the needy. She would not fear for her household in winter, because all her household were clothed with scarlet, because she had made coverings for herself and because her clothing was fine linen and purple. Her husband is well known in the city gate when he sits with the elders of the land. She made linen garments, then sold them, 
and traded belts to the merchants. Her clothing was strong and splendid, and she laughed at the time to come. She has opened her mouth with wisdom, with loving instruction on her tongue, watching over the ways of her household. She would not eat the bread of idleness. Her children have risen and called her blessed. Her husband also has praised her. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you have surpassed them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting. A woman who fears the Lord, she makes herself praiseworthy. Give her credit for what she has accomplished and let her works praise her in the city gates. New Testament reading, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 through chapter 3, verse 12. A living stone, a chosen people. So as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight, you yourselves as living stones are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, look, I lay in Zion a stone, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. So you who believe see his value. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stumbling stone and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may proclaim the virtues of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You once were not a people, but now you are God's people. You were shown no mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to keep away from fleshly desires that do battle against the soul and maintain good conduct among the non-Christians so that though they now malign you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God when he appears. Submission to authorities. Be subject to every human institution for the Lord's sake whether to a king as supreme or to governors as those he commissions to punish wrongdoers and praise those who do good. For God wants you to silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. Live as free people, not using your freedom as a pretext for evil, but as God's slaves. Honor all people, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the king. Slaves, be subject to your masters with all reverence, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are perverse. For this finds God's favor. If because of conscience toward God, someone endures hardships and suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if you sin and are mistreated and endure it? But if you do good and suffer and so endure, this finds favor with God. For to this you were called, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for you to follow in his steps. He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. When he was maligned, he did not answer back. When he suffered, he threatened no retaliation, but committed himself to God, who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we may cease from sinning and live for righteousness. By his wounds you were healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have turned back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Chapter 3. Wives and Husbands. In the same way, wives, be subject to your own husbands. Then, even if some are disobedient to the word, they will be won over without a word by the way you live, when they see your pure and reverent conduct. Let your beauty not be external, the braiding of hair and wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes, but the inner person of the heart, the lasting beauty of a gentle and tranquil spirit, which is precious in God's sight. For in the same way the holy women who hoped in God long ago adorned themselves by being subject to their husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You become her children when you do what is good and have no fear in doing so. Husbands, in the same way, treat your wives with consideration as the weaker vessels and show them honor as fellow heirs of the grace of life. In this way, nothing will hinder your prayers. Suffering for doing good. Finally, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, affectionate, compassionate, and humble. 
Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult, but instead bless others because you were called to inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from uttering deceit. And he must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the Lord's face is against those who do evil. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious and holy and righteous God, we thank you again today for your word. We thank you for this time, for this opportunity to get in your word. We thank you, O Lord, that you still teach us, you encourage us, you edify us, you correct us, you strengthen us through your word by the power of your spirit. And God, do we need your strength today? We need your edification today. We need your correction today. We need your mercy, your love poured out. We need you to guide our footsteps. We need you to grant us uh, an arrow to the direction that you would have us to go. For this new day, we need new mercies. And we thank you that you indeed are a generous giver. You are a cheerful giver. And you give out blessings to us open-handedly, your people. Thank you, O God, for your compassionate and generous heart and ways. We are reminded, O God, that you have called us, your people, the body of Christ, in many ways, to be like the king uh, and the future queen that are that are typified in Proverbs 31. To be people who are about justice and kindness and never exploitation of those who are poor and left out, but to be using whatever social power, whatever means that we have to honor our neighbor, to do good, to do right, and to do justice, an action, a verb, to do justice. We are reminded that we are to be found as the church, reverent and compassionate and thoughtful and stewarding our resources well, like the woman of great, of, of, of great value in Proverbs 31. The church is to be like her, one whose actions cause others to look to the Father, that cause this bride's actions to look to the bridegroom favorably, honorably. And so would you help your church? Would you help your church to not be busy with foolishness or folly or gossip or uh, division and strife over things that are, are meaningless? But instead, would you help us to be busy building with our hands, doing what is good, raising up a generation that rises up and calls us blessed, (laughs) for we are of noble character and for we treat them well with compassion and honor. We pray, O God, that you, O Lord, would help us to be of noble and compassionate and kind character in all of our relationships. We pray, O God, that in the work that we do, those that we work with and work for would be able to speak well of our character, that we are respectful, that we do what we say, that we follow through on our tasks, O God. We pray that we would be salt and light in all of our vocational spaces, Lord. We pray, O God, that you would help us, that you would show us how to navigate difficult and painful and challenging circumstances in our lives that we would never dim our light in those places, but we would walk in the ways that you would have us to walk. And so we recognize, oh God, that in these passages, particularly in 1 Peter, they have been used in many ways to subjugate people. These words, your words, your holy word, the God of justice, compassion, and mercy, there have been many for generations and even now who use these words to subjugate people, to justify their mistreatment, oh God. To lord, to lord power over women, to deny, to marginalize, to denigrate. But we know that we use your character of holiness and compassion and justice as the hermeneutic, as the interpreting force in which to interpret your word. And so we see now your word through that lens, the lens of your character, that you have called us 
to be mutually submissive in our marriages, that you have called us to be loving and kind and patient, that you have called us to be above reproach and to do such without fear, to esteem each other, to serve each other, to be kind to each other without fear, oh God. So we pray right now, particularly for those who have experienced mistreatment through your words being manipulated and exploited to oppress. We pray right now that those who have experienced or who are descendants of people who have had these words used against them for subjugation and enslavement, we pray, O oh God, that you would heal that trauma. We pray, O oh God, that you would set the captives free. We pray, O oh God, that those who have misused their authority, whatever it may have been, to hurt and harm others, that justice would roll down. Your justice would roll down, O God. We pray, O Lord, that the way that we govern ourselves and our marriages would be above reproach and that husbands indeed would love their wives, honoring and respecting them. We pray indeed that wives would love their husbands, honoring and respecting them, O God. We pray, O Lord, that we would do this out of a heart that is not filled with fear, but filled with love as a service unto you. And we pray for those who have been mistreated, manipulated, and even abused through these texts. We pray right now for those who might even be listening, who are in a place where they are experiencing abuse and have experienced the spiritual abuse of those using such scriptures to dominate, to injure them, to keep them silent. Would you remind them, O oh God, that also in your word, You speak clearly and boldly about your hatred towards those who harm and hurt their wives. And so, God, we thank you for the whole of Scripture. We thank you, O God, for the clarity of Scripture. We thank you, O God, for the interconnectedness of Scripture. But even more so, we thank you for your character, that you indeed set the captives free. Jesus, the great and mighty liberator. So teach us how to love. Teach us how to honor. And teach us how to do justice, that those things may hold hands together, that we may not live in fear, but that we might live in love. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from BibleStudyTogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Oh, 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 oh,